Good morning. Happy Easter. First of all, let us rejoice on this Easter of the year 2020. There are many first events of this new year, some of which haven't been very uh, good or enjoyable. But let me assure you, my brothers and sisters, sisters, God is still on the throne. Amen. I know this is not the Easter that you or I envisioned several months ago. That's okay. It's not how we dress. It's not just the Easter egg hunts. That's the most in, important and personal event of Easter. It's the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So let us keep that in mind. Let us rejoice knowing of this great event that turned the world upside down. And so today I'd like to talk to you about the first lot down. Excuse me, didn't mean to block my face. But my phone is acting up. There we go. No more phone. <laughs> and all there's many new terms we've learned in the last few weeks. Social distancing. Lockdown. Lockdown has a total new meaning uh, to us today. We all, all over the world, know what pandemic means. We may have known already, some of us, but today, people all over the world know uh, what pandemic means. We know what economic disaster is. We haven't been through anything like this for 100 years or so. But my brothers and sisters, we as Americans, we are better for it today because we've really got to see just what we really are made of and isn't that awesome isn't that a great thing we know that we are strong in the lord jesus christ and i'd like to talk to you for just a few moments of time about the first lockdown in history if you'll turn to the book of exodus chapter 12 and beginning to read in verse 20, or excuse me, verse 23 through 28, probably go further than that, 29. I always add, I don't know why, I just keep going, I guess. Uh, it says this in verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your house, houses to smite you. Now, this is reading in the King, uh, not the King James Version, but the New American Standard. Uh, and notice the blood over the doorpost. They were to be in their own houses, but they were under no obligation to stay in their house. Boy, doesn't that ring familiar today. We're all under lockdown, almost in 50 states. Probably just well to say we all are in some, some degree in every state. We are all under lockdown. And yes, the government, you know, is telling us to do that, making high suggestions from the CDC, uh, the Presidential Task Force on uh, the Cornea virus. They're all telling us to stay home. And you know what? 
really, we could sneak out and we could do whatever we wanted to do. But we're not helping our families. We're not helping our friends. And we're not helping those around us. So today, my brothers and sisters, just as in the first lockdown, we have free will. The children of Israel had free will. They could have gone outside the, the, the blood-covered homes that they were in. The blood covering of the lamb that saved their people and saved every one of their firstborn, even their cattle, even, even all of their animals, the firstborn, the firstborn of their children. They could have all been uh, uh, dead at midnight. But my brothers and sisters, that first Passover was the first lockdown in history. And today we face the same things. But today it is much different than then. At that point in the book of Exodus, we didn't have a Savior. We didn't have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to uh, secure our salvation. But today, my brothers and sisters, we do. And so let me continue on before I ramble. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we do have the free will to do what we want. But for the best of others and ourselves, we do what's the best for our families, our friends, and our communities. God gives us the ability to make up our own minds. We should understand that the decisions we make doesn't just affect us. Decisions that we make in our lives affect everyone around us. We're not an island unto ourselves, as some might think. The decisions we make in our lives have impacts upon everyone around us. Now let us go to uh, verse 29, if we may. Uh, let me find it again. And it says in verse 29, wherever it went to, <laughs> uh, that at the midnight hour, all the people of Egypt, all of their firstborn died. And you know, I was always told that at midnight, it's the darkest. And today, my brothers and sisters, this may be your midnight hour. And even though we may not be as affected in Beaver, Oklahoma, we only have one case of the community of virus. But there's death all over our nation. And our hearts go out to New York and California and and Washington, As a matter of fact, every state, every state. Uh, so we should be thankful. Those that have not suffered loss as of yet. It may be your darkest hour. But those of us that have the eternal hope of the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, my brothers and sisters, we should look up. We should look up and know where our salvation comes from. So like I say, this may be your darkest hour. Uh, the events that you, uh, you never dreamed imaginable have happened to you. But my brothers and sisters, uh, we have hope. We have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. It was Moses and the children of Israel's darkest hour. But notice what it says in the New Testament uh, about Moses and the children of Israel's faith. We are told by faith 
Moses kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. My brothers and sisters, we are covered by the Lord, uh, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a moment, what a thought that we are covered. And this faith that Moses demonstrated was extended to every household of the children of Israel that uh, had the blood of the lamb over the doorpost. And my brothers and sisters, those of us that are Christian that are covered by the blood of the lamb today, uh, that same faith is extended to us as it was Moses and the children of Israel. Notice what Romans uh, chapter 16 and verse 26 says, but now is manifested and by the scripture of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, has been according to the commandment, oh, I read that already, has been made known to all the nations, leading to obedience of faith. Now, I mumbled that up pretty good, but look at the last part of that verse, leading to the obedience of faith. We must realize that we must be obedient to the faith. We must know that God is going to see us through this crisis. That's not only in America, but it's all over the world. Look at first. Uh, let us go now from the temporary uh, of the sacrifice of a lamb in the Old Testament. The lamb blood that was covered by uh, uh, the blood of the lamb over the post of the doors. But let us go to Luke chapter 23. And starting with verse 23, it says, And when they came to the place called the skull, uh, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. And the people stood by looking on. And even the rulers were uh, sneering at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself, if this is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up to him, offer him uh, offering him sour wine. saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourselves. Now, uh, there was an inscription above him, this is the king of the Jews. Now, I want us to notice something here. Christ, in the process of the crucifixion, felt everything that a human will ever experience. Emotionally, spiritually, physically. Today, thousands of Americans are suffering because of the deaths of their loved ones, because of the canary virus. Others are unemployed. Uh, but even though we all suffer in all 50 states, and, you know, we list New York and California and Seattle and the other places because of the dense populations. But my brothers and sisters, nobody in America is suffering alone because what Jesus experienced on the cross. He felt every gambit every emotion, every physical response, and every spiritual thought that we ever will have in our lives. 
Christ experienced it. Now let's go to his death. John chapter 19, verses 28 and 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, said, I am thirsty. A jar, a jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a, a, a brunch of hyssop and brought it to his mouth. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And, you know, that would have been the most sad event if that had been left right there. But today, my brothers and sisters, it didn't end at the cross. No. Because three days later, my brothers and sisters, Hallelujah. Three days later, Jesus wasn't in that tomb that they buried him in. Notice John uh, chapter 20 and verse 20 says this. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken him away, the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and, uh, and the other disciples went forth and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciples ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first. And stooping and looking in, he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And, to, uh, and so also Peter also came, following him, and entered into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings there and the face cloth which had been on his head, not lying uh, with the linen wrapping, but to the, tomb, uh, to the tomb then also entered, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scriptures that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples went away again to their homes. My brothers and sisters, even at that point, the disciples didn't fully understand. But I want you to see something in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to read a, a few verses, starting with verse 20. But now Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. So my friends all over the nation, today that we know the dead in Christ shall rise. We know that when we close our eyes to physical death, We're going to open our eyes to a place that's called heaven. Because with that same resurrecting power that Jesus rose from the grave, so shall we, my brothers and sisters, rise. Hallelujah again. So this week, let us pray. Let us be uh, mindful of 
there still will be many lives lost this week. So let us be mindful of the loss of others. Let us say prayers for people that we don't know. Let us reach out to heaven. Let us touch the hem of the garment of our Savior. And you know, the Bible talks about bearing one another's burdens. My brothers and sisters, we need to bear the burdens of those that are lost, that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And they've suffered loss of loved ones. Those of us that know the Lord, we know his peace. We know his love. But my brothers and sisters, there's many, many people in our country that today do not know the Lord Jesus Christ on this Easter. And my heart goes out to those that don't know the Lord. My heart goes out to them because I know I know the emptiness. Because you see, when we don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and when, you know, my brother James died many years ago, I was 16 years old. I remember the emptiness of my heart. Because I didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see. When we buried him that day. I didn't think I would ever see him. Again. But oh how wrong I was. Hallelujah. I was so wrong. My brothers and sisters. I will see my brother again. Because before he died, he came to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today I know the Lord Jesus Christ is my savior. My hope is sure. So I... Pray for those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And hopefully even through this tragedy, you can turn tragedy to triumph by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior this day, this Easter. This will be an Easter that none of us that are living today will ever forget. Let us pray. Father, as we come once again, Lord, I pray for those, Lord, that are lost. And Lord, they don't know the security of your love. They don't know the meaning of the empty tomb. They don't know the resurrection. Lord, that you went back to heaven. And Lord, you sit on the right hand of the Father. And Lord, you await the moment that when you shall call. And the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise. And Father, I ask you today to come to those. I ask you that they'll make it to know you and turn tragedy into triumph. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that we too shall survive our lockdown as the children of Israel and Moses survived the lockdown of the Passover and Exodus. I ask you to do that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for allowing me into your home at some point in the near future.
life will go back to normal. Let us not forget what we've experienced, what we have learned through these last few weeks and months of time. Once again, God bless you and happy Easter.